Hello, John. Hello, Albert. Um, so today we're going to talk about uh, John Bruton. John Bruton um, passed away there a few days ago. Um, his brother, incidentally, was in my area, my constituency, even though it's not his constituency, quite recently. Um, but John himself, so John Bruton was born in 1947. Uh, he was Taoiseach from 1994 to 97. He qualified as a barrister in 1970, which is interesting because he chose to choose a life of um, politics and legislation, and he was part of the Good Friday Agreement. Um, and he resigned from politics in 2004. Yeah. Yeah, okay, uh, that's right. 1947 to 2024. And a big article, a few pages about him in the Irish Catholic. Uh, oh, sorry, the Meat Chronicle, A Death of a Statesman. And a great uh, few pages about him and his deeds and all the rest of it. Now, um, his election as Taoiseach happened accidentally when Dick Spring withdrew support for Albert Reynolds when Albert Reynolds was Taoiseach stroke Prime Minister uh, for a few years and very good. But um, Dick Spring and the Labour Party, Dick Spring being the prime mover, uh, withdrew support and supported Fine Gael. And so John Bruton, of Fine Gael was was elected Taoiseach. So that's the way he, he, he became Taoiseach, stroke Prime Minister. And he was quite good. And he met uh, John Major and he he did a lot of good work uh, and and um, as Taoiseach uh, and for a few years there while they were still in power uh, with the support of the Labour Party. And, um, and Dick Spring was the Minister for Foreign Affairs or external, whatever they call it. And uh, so at last, until there was an election, and then uh, it moved on to something else. But um, that's how uh, John was elected a Taoiseach and so Prime Minister, and he was good. And he he's uh, pro life. He was that when the referendum was on about the um, abortion. He's pro life, whereas his brother Richard, that you were talking about, is not in not in your constituency, but called to the house with. A councillor and um, there recently, and uh, so uh, Richard was different than John from that point of view. Uh, he didn't support, um, it didn't support what John did was pro life, and uh, so he would have been if he was teacher, he would have steered it that way. Uh, but he became the EU, the U European Union uh, ambassador to Washington, which is a prestigious post. So he had that great honour, and of course, as you rightly say, he was a barrister, and um, and, and good, and a very kindly kind of a man. He he wasn't um, he he wasn't a kind of uh, he was he was very steady, and I think a steady hand is what you need. You don't need anybody that's um, disruptive or has a a policy or an agenda that's different from what people want. He seemed to have an instinct for um, the way he was brought up and all the rest were in Dunboyne and a firm. Yeah. So, um, and I think a brother or a relative of his used to write in the Farmer's Journey and a very good writer, a Bruton. And uh, so they were a talented family and uh, in that sense with two brothers uh, being elected to, to the Irish Parliament, to da da uh, so John Lord Mersham served very well Ireland and uh, was a good credit to the country and to uh, everyone that knew him had great respect. I think I think, uh, I think John uh, John Bruton and Richard Bruton um, fall into a category of I, I I think they were probably too good for politics in some ways. Okay, they were quite they were probably as stately as you get both of them. Okay, um, and. They fall into a group of four people. I, I put four people in Ireland as stately politicians. Okay, so Albert Albert Reynolds, I would regard him as a statesman. I would put a John Bruton in there, Richard Bruton, and Gareth Fitzgerald. I think there is a nice mix of four really stately people. And compared to what we have now, we don't really have. I I don't really see anybody that's stately in office at the moment. You know, they don't have that that integrity that the calibre of the statesman, you know, um, and that's what we're lacking. Yeah, yeah. well, you know, somebody that uh, kind of, the people that they meet kind of respect their, the, what they stand for and, and and that kind of thing, and he had that quality, and I think 
the fact that he was a practicing Catholic and pro life, uh, these are things that kind of would do to realize that determine the sort that you are. Once you're in that way inclined, it good, you can see good. Albert Reynolds had that quality as well, I should rightly say. And Gareth Fitzgerald uh, was um, a professor, you know, he PhD. He wasn't a medical man, but he was well educated and he, he worked in a, an important job in Air Lincoln before he uh, went into politics and then uh, lived in Palmer. Par- Palmerston and 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 Dublin, a nice house in the right hand side, the red brick house have gone up. So he he had a nice residence there, and I used to see the guard when he was station stationed there because I was there was a park up there, Palmerston Park, and we used to have a bit of a walk, and I knew that road pretty well, I must say. And so um, uh, John John um, Bruton was was uh, also praised by President Higgins as a very upright, steadfast, stupid person, which he was. And this is what I think we need as a leader, the sort of a person of John Bruton. And uh, and I'm sure there's ones there waiting in the wings that have those qualities. And uh, we live in hope that they will come to the fore in due course um, sort of thing. But we have what we have, as the fellow says, and we have to just get along as best we can. We live in a democracy with its pluses and minuses, but it's a, a country that we can be very happy in because now we have this full employment and there's an economic, you know, we're getting our pensions and that. Because years ago, I remember, when pensions were very few and wages were few, they had to take a cut because of the economic situation. We were up the creek without a paddy. There was no... It looked like as if... Uh, and you were talking about what people said. There was an economist that used to be on the late, late show, a fellow called Foy, F-O-Y. And he maintained that the country could only sustain two million people. The rest of the dogs have to be educated for for the for immigration. Wasn't well, that a queer thing that that was in the seventies on, on on the late late show? That's what you call a, that's what you call what? a a small mind. <laughs> That's... Correct. Well, I mean, this was this was coming from a, an economist that uh, sort of you think to know their stuff. They do when they had to know their stuff. No, uh, they 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 make predictions and normally ninety two and seven hundred they're they're up the creek. They're they're wrong, and uh, but he he that's what he had come out with, and this is what we had to listen to. Now we certainly didn't listen to what it was one ear and out the other. But I said, imagine that fellow getting getting publicity on the on the on the TV. And a spoon, that sort of nonsense. Absolutely. Nonsense, yes. So there you go. That was John Bruton. He was, as I say, he was a stately politician. Um, he'll be remembered fondly. Um, he's one of the rare breeds of, of politician in Ireland um, at a time when, when, when we had stately politicians, you know. Right. Now, I'm going to say, and now, Father, hey, Mary, and going to be to the Father, uh, as I often do for the happy repose of his soul and that the light of heaven will join upon him. Excellent. And um, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and where shall be, world without end. Amen. And may you rest in peace, John, and the light of heaven shine upon you, and may your your widow, uh, that she'll have, have peace. And, and your family and uh, all those that knew you, John. Uh, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much, John. Thank you very much, Oliver.